Here we are again. Here wow. we are again. You should get an award for consistency. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row, baby. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. But we, we did are. try to quit, though. Two weeks in a row. Poison Ivy tried to take me out. Oh, yeah, that's true. I actually, I was getting incredibly <laughs> frustrated with the setup on this one. Uh, it's, you know... It's it's hard to explain, but there's so many different hoops you got to jump through just to get this going because we do it live on the spot for those that watch on social media. But then at the same time, uh, you got to have everything set up so this thing gets recorded. And did you push the button? Everything's everything's pushed. Okay, We're good. good. <laughs> we got to make sure people see that's on the backside because again, it's. There's there's so much consumption of this podcast after the fact, mm -hmm. you know. And we've talked about that time and time again, but it's 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 a lot. And y'all know I get stressed out. I get so stressed just out. Just chill, just relax. And then the camera angle isn't working, and it is just just a bunch of stuff. So, but it's fine. It's fine. We're here. It's all good. We're two weeks in a row. Two weeks. We um. Uh, you have been infected with poison ivy, <laughs> and I could tell by the look on your face when I asked you what time you wanted to start that you were not anticipating doing the show. I was covered in calamine lotion all over my face when you said that. I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, but I was like, yeah, sure, she can fix that, I'm sure. Like, I, I throw low, some makeup on there. I low key think you wanted me to come on here like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I'm good with it, cuz. Google it close. We just want to be consistent. Um, and for those of you that um, keep up with this show on a regular basis, we've got our core audience, but we've been adding a lot of new people that are going in and pulling up the audio, pulling up the video. Uh, we want to, you know, whatever. <laughs> so last night we had a blast. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we promoted it that well on the show last week, but we promoted it heavily on the radio and it, it turned out fantastic, I believe. Well, actually, we had two events. Um, when, I feel like I'm so loud. Do I sound loud to you? No. Or is it just me? It's, it's just, just me. Uh, we had two events last week or since the last, uh, last gimmick here. We had uh, Blues, Bourbon, and Bruce Friday. We did the radio show live from... A, a bar south of Birmingham. That turned out great. A lot mm -hmm. of people showed up, had a good time. Uh, a lot of hey nows being yelled and all that. And then uh, what I feel like I had even more fun at was the Birmingham Barons game last night. Now, as an explainer for those that listen to this and they're not in the area, the Birmingham Barons is like our, what do you call it, a triple-A team, minor league baseball team, mm -hmm. and it's an affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. It's it's had a pretty broad history. Uh, if you remember the time that Michael Jordan played baseball for a short period of time, this is the team he played for. So Birmingham's very proud of the Barons and all that. Um, that's who was playing last night, and our dear friend John Bird was singing the national anthem. It actually started as a joke, and I was like, yeah, you should you should get him to let you sing the national anthem. He's like, I mean, I could try. And so he went and tried out, and sure enough. I didn't know that originated on the show. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Sure did. That's cool. Sure did. And um, it, it might have even started as like trying to get him to do the first pitch or something. Mm -hmm. But then we were like, well, you could actually try out for the national anthem. And sure enough, he... Uh, he did it, and, and he did great. Yeah, I think he, he did. did a fantastic job. I think it was so fun that everyone was there, too. That made it a lot a lot more fun. That's yeah. definitely what made it fun. Um, actually, do we want to... We didn't play it on the show today. Let me see if I can keep this from blowing up. Um, we didn't... I, I think on News and Views, they, they played John Bird's National Anthem, but you've got a video, and you may have had the best video of all, uh, from last night mm -hmm. where John Bird was singing. So for those of you that have not seen it or on the audio side you have not heard it, we'll play it for you right now. Now keep in mind this is recorded on a cell phone, so the quality's the quality is what it is. But this was last night of the Birmingham Barons game. Oh. 
They started yelling hey now after that, too. <laughs> Phenomenal job. I was very, uh, very excited to see that go off without a hitch. Now, there there was times that I was worried. Uh, it, it, and, you know, I guess I, I didn't want something bad to happen. But I thought, man, if it did, there the silver lining would be good content for the show. Right. But no, he, he didn't mess up. He, didn't mess up. He, he wasn't nervous at all, which I was shocked by. I was... I was incredibly nervous. Well, you would have been nervous. That's why you were oh, shocked that he was I was nervous that he was doing it. Yeah. And we had a lot of people also ask us, like, who's who uh, in in the thing. And, and it, it's weird, because you would think with social media and everything else, you know who's who. I didn't know who some of the people were, and I've been to the events. But we'll go left or right here. This is Steve West, producer of uh, Dixon and Vining. Obviously, Tim Melton, the giant John Bird here singing. <laughs> This is Spud, who wore his Braves uh, paraphernalia. There's Dell Jackson wearing the same shirt he wears every day, which is his logo, and it says GOAT. And uh, that's Yaffe right there, who uh, works with Dell Jackson at uh, WVNN over in Huntsville. So that's the cast and crew there. But how about that camera work on your part? You didn't it even move. Of, it looked kind of blurry when you were playing it. I think I think it's the way the Facebook loads up. Oh, uh, okay. It's I can say it's video. crystal clear on the on my end. Yeah. Um, I'm listen. I'm good at taking pictures with a cell phone and video. You did not move <laughs> an inch. I'm telling you, that was impressive. I was trying to use fancy camera work because I was doing the Facebook Live video. Um, I was like panning over to the American flag while he was singing. And he made me watch it later. He's like, watch how I panned over to the flag. I listen. <laughs> he was so I, proud of himself. I think, I, I think if radio didn't work out for me, I think I would be phenomenal at being a cameraman. Like a reality TV cameraman? Just just anything. What show would you want to do? Like Sister Wives? or <laughs> If it was a reality show, <laughs> yes. um, probably... I don't know. I don't watch a lot of reality TV. Well, Probably. Oh, I'd want to do First 48. That's what I would want to do. I'd do Thousand Pound Sisters. <laughs> you like the Slayton Sisters. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'd do. Yeah. Be some good food. <laughs> no, they're all on a diet now. Good food in the break room. Have you seen how much weight Tammy's lost? No. She's gone from like 700 pounds, to, I'm guessing, probably around 400 by now. Ooh. She's lost a lot of weight. She's in the fours, baby. Maybe even the threes. I don't know. She's in the fours, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that went off good. We got to meet a lot of cool listeners. I mean, all of the listeners are cool, but we, we just we met a few of them. I even signed an autograph last night. Yeah. <laughs> Which is that was weird. New. It was weird. I've done that probably like three times in the history of being in radio. Mm hmm. But uh, that goes to show you how smart that man is for wanting my autograph because, hey, there's only three in circulation. <laughs> so I get your autograph once a week. This guy, yeah, that's true. I'm going to sign my checks <laughs> before she deposits them. <laughs> um, but no, I, I can't say enough about it. And then Trish and I got to 
have our own little date night. Can we talk about the fact that we were dressed like twins for the first time in our relationship? We, yeah, we were. We actually wore the same. You know, I've got obviously uh, two two base ninety nine five baseball jerseys because they misspelled the first one. They put McLean. And I told her, I was like, I kind of, I was talking about it on the radio that I was going to wear the McLean. And so I'll wear that. You wear my McLean shirt. And Mm -hmm. she actually did. And we were, we were twinning. Yeah. And he stopped at the store to buy the exact same pair of glasses he was wearing. Yeah. On the way. (laughs) Because I knew, I knew she wanted my glasses. I said, she's going to want to wear my glasses and I ain't going to be able to tell her no. So let me just buy a pair on the way. Look at and you then we'll knowing me problem. like that. Because that's exactly what I would have done. We solve the problem, baby. Uh, this was us. We went out and ate at Hattie B's, which for those of you not in the area, that's a, a Nashville-based chicken restaurant, I guess you call it. Mm-hmm. It's called Famous Fried Chicken or Nashville Hot Chicken or something. And uh, I just, it, I, I want you to look and see the look on her face as I'm simply just minding my own business, eating my food. Watch her. Hold on, hold on, watch this. Look at the look she's shooting me. (laughs) Baby, I look at you like that probably three times a week. (laughs) I'm just licking my chops, baby. Trying to get the Nashville hot chicken off my fingers. Mm. I didn't do nothing. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm looking at you with love. Yeah, that looks like love right there. <laughs> anyway, we had a good time. We don't ever we don't we don't go nowhere. Nowhere. We ain't never been nowhere. We never and been nowhere. So for us to actually do we didn't even plan on doing that. It was I was just like, Well, we gotta pick up something for dinner on the way home and then it turned into actually sitting down somewhere. So that was that was weird. But mm-hmm. it, it was fun, but it was weird. Felt out of my element, especially eating, eating dinner I mean, at like seven thirty. You look like you're right up o'clock. in your element, licking your fingers in public like that. It was a special occasion. <laughs> Just giving myself. I have to said, if you suck the fingerprints right on off of your fingers, yet. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that's all the housekeeping I got. Is there anything mm-hmm. else we need to update people on? Not much, other than the fact that I wish I would have brought that uh, poison ivy cream back here with me. Mm. Um, <laughs> Andrew McLean, who.com. That's still yes. a thing. Uh, you get all your podcast stuff there. So if you have not visited that website, go do so and, uh, scroll towards the bottom and subscribe. We get all the notifications when people subscribe or you go to the, the message section and you send us a message. We get all of that stuff. Uh, and it, it makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside when y'all hit us up. So, well, and also, um, when you leave a message that doesn't sign you up like for the emails. Oh, yeah. So make sure that even if you're leaving a message, you do the subscribe section as well. Because I noticed we've had a lot of messages and those same people didn't go and subscribe. So I and think they're that like, they're... hey, I'm subscribed. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, got some interesting messages on there, though. I think you need to bring that to the show. Yeah, we should just read them. Uh, one said, uh, uh, I support Vladimir Putin. <laughs> yeah. I'm like our puppet president right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it'd be a tight race between those two, if we're being honest. Last bit of housekeeping. I didn't mean to spend the first 15 minutes of the show doing housekeeping. But, you see this visor right here? It's so good looking. The line. This is um, a boomer. A longtime listener, boomer, hit me up one day. He's like, I'm so sick and tired of seeing you wear Nike stuff. Sick and tired of seeing that Nike visor. He said, I'm going to get you a visor, mate. What do you want on it? I was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm good with just a plain visor for all I care. It's not about the Nike. It's just about the way it fits. And uh, he's like, well, pick something. I said, just put the line logo on it. He said, all right, bet. And he got them made. (laughs) Two of them. Got them sent to me today. And it's a little bit of a different style. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I think maybe I can get used to it. I think you will. I mean, they did a pretty good job on it. Once you get enough compliments on it, you'll like it. Because it's embroidered in everything. And it's in your font. It's, yeah, it's, that was what was shocking Embroidery to me. Embroidery in your font is crazy. Because we got like a spray paint style font or something. Yeah. So, wow. Good job. Good job, everybody. Everybody <laughs> did a good job. Um, 
And also, special shout out to my mom. She said uh, before we started the show, she goes, I wish we could all just do a three-way FaceTime and we spend some time together. So we're doing a podcast. Just pretend you're on FaceTime with us. <laughs> well, we could set her up over here. And so she's, uh, I should just call her on the show. She <laughs> loves when I do that. <laughs> she loves that. Okay, so I, w- I want to start by by talking about this. Um, you have, for some reason, and this person has been in our vernacular for a while, but not for these reasons, you have all of a sudden just become this knee-deep-in-it, Swifty, Taylor Swift fan, and it just out of nowhere. completely came out of left field. And so there's this constant hum of Taylor Swift playing in the background at my house at all times. And I just need to know what happened. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm ADD. Yes. And so... Is Taylor ADD people too? People with ADD tend to latch on to something like First 48... <laughs> <laughs> and that's their go-to until they find something new to, to latch on to. So that's the first thing. The second thing is TikTok. It's TikTok's fault. Like, she's on tour right now, and every time I opened up TikTok, someone was playing her music or dancing to her music, playing an interview or telling a story about her, and I started to slowly learn the songs, and after about a week or two of her being on tour... I am now, I have a playlist that says Mama Says It's Okay. And it's Taylor Swift songs. Oh my God. (laughs) I mean, it's like what I listen to in the morning on the way to the gym, on the way home from the gym, in the shower, when Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, yep, yep, yep. Yes, yes, and yes. But you know what I thought about this afternoon? Taylor Swift? This is kind of Yaffe's fault because he said something last night. He said, Do you guys do like a. a segment on his show once a week or something where y'all talk about conspiracy theories. And I said, no, no. Lord. And he said, well, you need to. And I was like, no, I don't know about all that. I said, I said, but we used to do the show called highly suspect. That was such we, a good name, by the way. That's what he said too. He's like, I love that name. I said, I do too. Anyway. Um, and we did an episode on Taylor Swift because she looks just like the founder of Satanism's daughter. And there's a conspiracy that, they have used her DNA to clone her. And that that's Taylor Swift's actually a clone. I don't know if you guys remember that episode or not. Do you remember that? I do. And there are probably... (laughs) Probably Like five people that remember that. Yeah, there's probably a handful of like OG listeners that that remember the Highly Suspect series. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not opposed to getting back to that in, in some sort of capacity, maybe once a month or something like that. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I I think, you know, we're... With with over the line, over the line incorporated LLC. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're trying to build the brand that's got multiple things going mm-hmm. on. We've obviously got this. We've got the radio show. We've got um, the interview series. Do you remember how I said I had ADD? Yes, you're going into the weeds. We well, need to stay I, on I, track I, here. In, 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 anyway, <laughs> we'll we'll do highly suspect uh, sometime. Anyway, um, as the, I was saying, the, it the, made the, me think about Taylor Swift. My mm-hmm. all of a sudden, um, I can't say attraction. It's like an obsession all of a sudden of Taylor Swift. It's super weird. Like I'm it's watching her weird. interviews. I'm like learning all of the stuff behind her songs it's because me out. she does like they call them Easter eggs for her songs, like clues of what's going on in her life, in her music, and in interviews and stuff like that. So all these Swifties are on TikTok trying to figure out what Taylor's trying to tell them. It's just crazy. I'm laying in bed and she's explaining, <laughs> explaining. like the meaning behind a, t- a certain Taylor Swift song, and I'm like, <laughs> like we, <laughs> what? It's so cool. And um, anyway, so I was thinking about. I'm like, what if she really is the high priestess's daughter's clone, and that is she has sucked me in. Let's think about this. <laughs> all right, for those that that know the Bible or have studied the Bible, they know that. Um, Satan used to be an angel, right? And mm-hmm. his role in heaven was kind of like the choir director, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the music was that particular angel's thing. And then he started getting a little abrasive, and God was like, nah, bro, 
you're out of here, throws him out, goes to hell. But he's still, like, his background is in music. And it just so happens that somebody associated with Satanism turns out to be the most popular musician ever on the planet since Elvis Presley. Well, she's not associated. It's a conspiracy theory. You don't know that? I don't know that. She could be the devil herself. But I sent you The pictures. devil's gender neutral. I know some of you guys have seen this before, but I thought it was worth revisiting. Mm. I sent him pictures of her. Mm. Now, just you have to imagine... The pictures of Xena are from like 1980s to 1985. So you'd have to picture her with today's eyebrows and today's hairstyles and stuff like that. But All right. So they look just alike. Here's a story. He says, here's why the theory that Taylor Swift is a Satanist clone absolutely checks out. <laughs> and there's the two. Xena LeVay. She's got shoulder pads in too. I mean, like their facial structure, uh, minus the eyebrows, the way they're drawn on, but they look just alike. Well, and speaking of lookalikes, and I've been telling you this for a long time, that's why it's bizarre that you've gone full-blown Swifty, is that I've always said that younger Trish looks like Taylor Swift. Uh, this and is not me, true. Mm, 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 yo, I want y'all to watch. I'm for those dressed of you, up for Halloween in this picture, by the way. <laughs> dressed up as Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, for those of you that are no. watching. <laughs> For those of you that are watching this, I'm about to show you the undeniable proof that a young Patricia McLean looked like Taylor Swift. You ready? Is everybody ready? Here it comes. Here we go. Boom. That's not Taylor Swift. Look at you. Look at this. This is this is Taylor Swift. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, Xena looks like Taylor Swift. Look at this. Look at Taylor Swift. Nope. Taylor Swift. Nope. Oh, Swifty all day. Taylor Swift. Nope. Taylor Swift? No, babe. I don't look anything. Now, my cousin looks like Taylor Swift. You look like your cousin. I have my cousin, and I have some facial features that are the same, but she actually is built like Taylor, blonde like Taylor. Her facial structure looks like Taylor. Okay, okay. Back, back, back to the sameness. Maybe just... our noses are the same. I don't know. I'm right. We know I'm right. <laughs> now everybody knows I'm right. Anyway, so now I'm starting thinking, I've, I've been sucked in. She By does, the devil. Listen, she does use GD in a few of her songs. And Ooh. she also uses a lot of the symbolism, like the snakes and the... She do the, the triangle, the she Illuminati. Sits in, I don't know. I haven't seen that I bet yet. She did. But she sits in what looks like the devil's chair and mm -hmm. she wrote Kanye's name in red on the list and like all kinds of stuff. Like, I don't know. So let, let's see why this, um, this story from Mashable says it checks out. Come on, I'm going to read through it real quick. And I know you don't <laughs> let me reading stories, but, uh, what went, th what went wrong with Hiddle Swift? The same thing that always makes Taylor Swift's relationship go down in flames. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, C. Swift's uncanny resemblance to Zena Shrek, former high priestess of the Church of Satan, has been common knowledge on the internet for a while. Rumors of a deeper connection have reached a fever pitch recently, based in part on the airtight theory that Swift is a clone of Shrek, who is the daughter of Church of Satan founder Anton LaVey. The evidence is hard to shake off. Shake it off. Oh, <laughs> Shrek and Swift are both represented by the serpent emoji and have blonde hair. Shrek's dad founded the Church of Satan, while Swift's surrogate father is a Merrill Lynch executive who owned a Christmas tree farm. Obviously, the two women have too much in common to ignore, but their connection cannot merely exist on the surface. A close look at their life story suggests an interwoven plot that all points to the truth. Swift's love for Lucifer is red, burning red. So I guess that's related to a song or something. Well, one of her albums is called Red. Ah. Uh, this says uh, Taylor Swift is actually an Illuminati clone made from Xena LaVey's DNA, a well-known Satanist, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Shrek was a high priestess of the Church of Satan from 85 to 1990, which is very suspicious because Taylor Swift talks a big game about being born in 1989. 
Ooh. <laughs> Naming her smash album 1989 is clearly Tay Tay LaVey's desperate attempt <laughs> to emphasize that she had a normal human birth and was not cultivated in a cauldron or laboratory. The whole thing reeks of a cover up. Okay, so this has to be a satire article. I don't know. I'm buying it. I, I believe it. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not. I just think they look a lot alike. I absolutely look at this. Does this not look like Satanism to you? <laughs> Looks like Satanism to me. Oh goodness gracious! Shake it off, shake it off. Don't don't give me a copyright hit, YouTube. Yeah, please don't sing. Please. Uh, I mean, look at some of those pictures. Look at the next thing that's coming down. Hold on, let's see. Okay, look at that. Trish, Trish, <laughs> both look like you. Am I wrong? For those of y'all in the live chat, am I am I not correct in saying that Trish looks like young Trish looks like Taylor Swift? Uh, I don't. Maybe you don't look like her right now, but no. I just, maybe I mean you kind of still do. No, I didn't back then either. Look at them. Look at those. Now evil maybe beings. if I had makeup on and my hair done. In when I was younger, yeah, I may have resembled, but just plain Jane Trish, no. Hmm. I don't know. That article didn't even go into some of the reasons why people say that they are similar. So I think that was just a satire. Mm. Anyway, I don't even care if it's true or not. I just think it's interesting how much they look alike. Yeah. So, and well. everybody that crosses her goes down in flames. Yeah. I, uh. I told you about two of them. Think about all the people who's had their lives ruined because they fell in love with Taylor Swift. They didn't fall in love with her. They crossed her. Like, one stole her music. The other one was publicly yeah, you, embarrassing you, her. You went into some big spiel about Taylor Swift, like, wrecking some dude's life because he stole her music or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. I, I don't even... It was so deep. I was like, I got. But it was good, wasn't it? I was like, I got to get out of this situation. <laughs> and the the song that went along to it was great. It's called what is it called? Um, Vin. It's called Hail Satan. No, what's that word? Uh, not Vendetta, but Vengeance. But Vengeance. Vengeance is mine. Let me just look and see. What Vengeance it's is you Swift. You guys can go listen to the song. Uh, but you can't listen to it on here. It's vigilante something. Uh, Vocal vigilante. Vigilante. Vengeance is Swifty. Oh, it's called Vigil Vigilante Shit. That's the name of the song. <laughs> Taylor's got a mouth on her, by the way. Oh I had no idea. God. And she loves cats. Yeah, she that that's another thing. It's just it's it's almost getting to be too much <laughs> with uh, the cats and everything. And I can't believe you just cussed on the show. Am I not allowed? You gotta at least let me beep you. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you can go back through and and bleep it for the, the I gotta, people that I listen later be, on. I gotta be ready. No, you can cuss. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. All right. So, what else are we talking about tonight? Let's have Taylor Swift talk. Uh, let's um, let's let's do this. So, got a couple of, of of things that we just need to generally address from over the past week. That's kind of the direction we've decided to go with the show. Um, we don't really do politics on this show, but this is kind of a big deal that the current president of the United States is um, running for reelection. And the reason that is um, concerning or odd is because he will be 82 years old by the next election. Now, I, I bring this up in a, in a non-political sense to say, like, if we were just asking the average people on the street, what do you think? That's what I'm real curious about. People don't pay attention to politics or anything like that. Hey, Joe Biden's going to be 82 he'll be 86 by the end of a second term what's your opinion on that are you Is asking he, me or what the average person i'm asking you what the average person would i think. think now judging by just what i've seen on social media um now people are on to at least the surface level of why he's bad news yeah i mean yeah it's it's mind-boggling mm-hmm 
of what society has been through over the past three years. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. COVID, George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement, all of these things happened, and some of these things advanced a certain message or point of view. Uh, One of the hot topics going into the last election was racism, police brutality, these very hard-to-talk-about issues for most people. Mm -hmm. And the guy that won during all of that, the guy that won the election with more votes than anybody, including the first-ever black president, is a guy that's 80 years old and has a very racist past in Congress. A, a, a past of hanging out with racist people, being friends with them, and saying incredibly insensitive things. It's just hard for me to believe that this day and age that would happen. Now, I know on the radio I'll talk about this a million times, but I just wonder, like, what's the average Joe Blow think about it on the street? Do they just say, it's a crusty old white guy, too old, let's get rid of him. I've been seeing a lot, honestly, uh, a man on the street interviews and stuff where people are saying bring Trump back. And the reason they're saying that is because it's starting to catch up with them about how much better life was, even monetarily. Mm -hmm. Jobs, making money, things were good. Your life wasn't being interrupted by this, that, and the other. And the people that don't watch, uh, think about, care about politics, Mm -hmm. Things they do care about is whether it's provide for their family or just getting out there hustling, making money. All of that has slowed down tremendously, so they want to change. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I'm saying let's stop electing old, crusty people. I mean, is that what actually happened, though? No, of course not. Exactly. But don't say that. I'm not going to. Because YouTube is going to. That's why I'm being careful what I say. Destruct (laughs) us. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, we didn't say that, YouTube. Nope. <laughs> and Mark Zuckerberg. We were just kidding. We're totally kidding. Um, Another thing, and and I don't know why I, I grabbed this headline and thought it was going to be interesting for you to you for some reason. Okay. And it's probably not. Okay. But you strike me as somebody that likes the actor Tyrese Gibson. I don't even know who it is. Okay, so that's a good start. (laughs) Um, He's the guy that was in the show or in the movie, the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, okay, I see him. I know who that is. He's been in a lot of movies. I'm I'm just thinking of you as I'm not a pop culture person. I don't know who these actors and you're you're not, but I feel like you kind of are when it comes to the early 2000s. That you're more in tune with that pop culture than any other time. All right, let's let's see. And the headline <laughs> says, actor Tyrese Gibson held in contempt over unpaid child support. Okay. How are people with money, lots of money, fame, everything else, mm-hmm. how are they finding themselves in positions to be dealing with a court over unpaid child support? Uh, the same way they file bankruptcy and can't pay taxes and all of that, they blow through their money because it's not endless and they spend it like it's endless. That would be my guess. Either that or he's refusing to pay it. Yeah, I guess it could be a situation where you're just refusing to pay because your baby bottom is a low-down, dirty, good-for-nothing skank. Well, or you're a dirty, low-down, good-for-nothing POS. Could be one of those. <laughs> let's, let's be this real. This says uh, a famous actor, Tyreek Gibson, held in contempt of court Tuesday after refusing to pay the full value of court-ordered child support payments to his ex-wife. In August, Fulton County ordered Gibson to pay $10,000 a month. Holy smokes. In uh, child support to the baby mama, but he refused and instead had been just paying a little over 2000 a month. He also alleged on Instagram that the judge who is handling the case is a racist and called on civil rights attorney Ben Crump and Martin Luther King III to support him in court. How about that? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting angle to take. Gibson took the stand Tuesday and testified he felt 10000 a month was excessive. I would say it is. 
depending on what he makes. What he makes, right. And the lifestyle that they had. The Transformer star, so he's in Transformers, also claimed that Samantha is making well over 100000 a year outside of what I make per year, and the necessary needs of the actual child are beyond met. The judge fired back at the actor for failing to pay the amount he was ordered to pay and held him in contempt of court. Let's, uh, hey, TMZ, let's try you out, buddy. You want to see what's going on here? <laughs> little video. That's what I'm talking about. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to pull up. We're going to have to watch it on the little screen. Just bear with me, cuz. And we also were hoping to accomplish sharing, shedding light on Samantha Gibson making well over 100000 a year outside of what I make per year and the necessary needs of the actual child are beyond met. Oh, I understand. And you're aware that if you pay these amounts and then the Court of Appeals reverses it, you don't get your money back. I am well aware of okay. that. Do you want the court to consider um, you paying it into a, a, a bond so that in the event Whatever the court rules, no one, no one is prejudiced. I, I would, I would want to know more about what this means as far as a bond. But if I could position myself to show any intentionality to to do that, if that's the final, final outcome, then I'll take care. Of it. But doing something that is beyond the scope of the law. It feels like punishment. It feels like it's it's just unnecessary. And if the roles were reversed, I just really feel like I wouldn't be sitting here. So it's a racism, is I guess is what he's saying. Uh, I think he's saying that if she were the one that was the big earner and he had the child. Ah. But listen, here's the thing. I'm just Googling. I don't know if this is true or not. It says he has a net worth of six million dollars. Yeah, um, that seems kind of low, I think, because he was in Fast and the Furious and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, a woman making a hundred thousand dollars a year in Alabama sounds like a lot of money. But you have to think, child. I mean, just daycares running people five. I mean, uh, twenty five hundred dollars a month right now. A woman making a hundred thousand dollars a year in California. Is like a woman making probably twenty five or thirty thousand here, okay. Right. So he's saying she makes a hundred thousand outside of what I make. So what he gives her, but that's still not a lot of money if you're living in California. Hmm. That's first of all. Second of all, it doesn't matter if you two built a life together. You're a married couple and you built a life together, and you now have the job and she stayed home and took care of the house, took care of the kids. She's not just a baby mama; she was a wife. She helped you build that life. You're going to walk out and leave her taking care of the kid full time, having to worry about daycare, getting them to school, getting them to practice, all that stuff. She's got all this extra burden, and you're going to go live in your $6 million lifestyle? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think so. You're asking the wrong person. Well, he did, he did <laughs> mention um, he did mention it, it, it being instead of paying what he owes, that it, was, it felt like punishment. And I guess it can be. I mean, you're being punished for picking the wrong lady to have a baby with. I don't think it, it's not necessarily that he picked the wrong lady. If a court looked at your finances and said, this is what's fair. I don't know what the rules are in California. In Alabama, they look at what you make and they decide it based on what you make and how many chil children there are. It's a formula that's worked out so that it's a fair across the board. At least it was when I got my divorce. Right. Um, if a judge came to that number, there was probably a reasonable reason for that number. And we're, we're just looking at it like, oh my God, $10,000 a month, that's so much money. They're living in a completely different world from what we're living in. With completely different, like they have private schools they go to to keep them safe because they're celebrities, children's, like all kinds of things are filtered into that number, you know? And he's got $6 million and he's, Got back child support of three hundred thousand dollars. That says something to me. Wonder how old this kid is. <clears throat> like, how know. much longer you got to go with it? 
Judge Kevin Farmer reserved the right to arrest the actor, but opted not to. He was ordered to pay a total of $237,000 in back child support for the, the child, for their child named Soroya, as well as $399,000 for Samantha's attorney fees. See, that's another thing a lot of people with money will do, is they'll make, and it happens to men and women, but it happens to women a lot, where the man will keep going to court because they hope that they will eventually the other person will run out of money and they can't defend themselves anymore so that they'll get their way that way. And that kind of sounds, if she's got $400,000 worth of attorney fees, that sounds like that might be happening in this case too. Racking he's it wait, up. He's waiting it out. Yeah. Racking it up, baby. That's what they're trying to do. They get you in court and they try to drain you. So they just hammer you. I mean, in in my realm, you see it in politics all the mm-hmm. time, but you know, in in Hollywood and in rich people world, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, um, and I don't mean to take her side just because she's the female. I just, you know, just from another perspective of that. Well, speaking of relationships and yeah. finding the person you want to spend the rest <laughs> of your life with, yes, uh, there is a new trend that is going around within the male community okay. where. Uh, some some within our community, they don't feel like they're tall enough. Okay. For you, uh-huh. is it important for a man to be taller than you? Um, I mean... Uh, Not is it a deal breaker, but is it important? I wouldn't say it's important, but every man I've ever been in a relationship with has been taller. Yes. Would you date a shorter man? Um... I, think, I mean, hypothetically, I think obviously. I, I think I have. Is it weird? I don't think it would be you, weird. You no. pat him on the head? Well, not that much shorter than me. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I've only I've been in like three relationships, and they were all long term. So it's not like I've been out there do, do dating you, the world. If they're shorter, do you give them piggyback rides or <laughs> let them ride on your shoulders? I, all of my men have been at six one or over. <laughs> mm. Well. That could be a thing, and I, I don't know how the females feel about it, but apparently... Well, both of my children date people shorter than them. That is true, actually. Both of them. But apparently, leg-lengthening surgery is gaining popularity among men seeking to be taller, according to doctors, which is according to NBC News. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this was a little bizarre, but... Doesn't that seem like a painful procedure? I would do it. To lengthen your legs? Hell yeah. You want to be taller? If I was a man and I was 5'7", I would want to be taller. I mean, yeah, I'd consider it, but I I just don't know. Uh, Here's an example. As a woman, I wouldn't care. Guy named Alex. He's Mm 5'7", and uh, he considers himself short. He's a 26-year-old. Uh, he asked his real name not to be used to maintain his privacy. He said he was sick of the insults and jeering comments about his height. Five seven though. That's not. Yeah, that's not that bad. You're not like four and a half feet tall. And who cares if you were? Shorter men quote routinely get spoken down to. Because they're down there. Yeah, I get it. Uh, where was I at? Shorter men can routinely get spoken down to just because of this trait that they can't control, according to Alex. So last January, he got a leg lengthening operation to increase his increase his height to five ten. You, don't, bruh, you you going through all that? And you only going up three inches? Listen, I know a lot of men that would do that for other things. So he said, "My goal was to never be tall. It's to be in a place where no one comments on my height." Leg lengthening is an intense and expensive process, but one that has become more popular and accepted. In the last five years, according to Dr. Shahab Mahamaha, who is a surgeon at the Height Lengthening Institute in Burbank, California. The Height Lengthening (laughs) Institute. That sounds made up. He says, I even have 60, 65-year-old guys that have come come to me to undergo the procedure because it just doesn't stop. The short jokes keep going on, and they feel inferior. The $75,000 four-hour operation, which is not generally covered by insurance, I would imagine not, involves cutting the thigh bones in each leg and inserting rods inside of them. That cannot be good. 
Then over the next three to four months, the rods are lengthened by, lengthened by up to one millimeter per day via an external remote control. New bone grows over the rods. That sounds awful. Yeah, but if you think about it, if you have some type of insecurity, body dysmorphia, like a woman wanting to have liposuction, or a man for that liposuction, or, you know, these women that get fake butts, but in hell men get it done too, or have a nose job, or get, you know, plugs in their hair, and people will go through those links to get the image that they feel like they need to have or that they want to have. Can you imagine? Okay, so they put the rods in your legs mm -hmm. and it, it just goes up by a millimeter per day. They mm -hmm. use a remote control to, I guess, lengthen the rods. <laughs> what if the doctor's like... I accidentally pushed the wrong button. Oh! And then all of a sudden your bones like shoot through your body because it he hit the wrong button. Can I tell or you a slipped. story? I used to work out with a bodybuilder. Super nice guy. But he had calf implants and chest implants. Okay. What are you working out if you're 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 doing? He was cheater. a listen. He 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 was he's like known worldwide. He's like a big time bodybuilder, and he had these implants because he could not get his calf muscles to grow, and one of them shot through the skin one day. Ugh. Could you imagine Ugh. it coming out of the skin? And he had to have surgery on it, obviously. Mm. But I mean, I didn't see it. I wasn't there for it. But he told me about it happening. That sounds horrific. That <sighs> sounds. That's the image I got when you told that story just now. I mean, that sounds absolutely <laughs> terrifying. I know. So let me let me give you real quick um, this this video. It's the report from from NBC. I'm just I I can't I I understand I I, I can I say I understand. You're gonna end up getting this. Uh, I'm just thinking about the fact that I get that you're getting picked on and it's hurtful and all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, who's really ridiculing you? Maybe it's just a joke here and there. But yeah. it just seems bizarre to me Yeah, to I go would. through that. <laughs> like, some, you, you just, you're just born short. I was born fat. Like You weren't born fat. Well, I don't know. I was a chunky baby. <laughs> All right, here's a report from NBC. Let's let's watch this real quick. See if it'll explain better. The external device called the ERC. It lengthens the nail about one millimeter a day, and new bone forms. Alex, is that you? I believe it's a third of a millimeter per turn. So if you do it three times a day, essentially your lengthening period is about three months. If you're doing the full length of slightly over 3.1 inches. The first at home <laughs> no. The initial no. surgery is about 75 grand. And then the rod removal surgery. Oh, I believe, God. I covered by insurance. So for me, the second surgery is just 10 grand flat. Session complete. You'll have physical therapy. For me, that was, in the beginning, I think five days a week. You should also probably factor in the cost of Ubers, your Grubhub and Uber Eats deliveries for a little bit. His pants are already They'll down probably be so about when you like lift him out of that Uber. Oh, man. <laughs> I just can't imagine wanting to... That's got to be so freaking painful, dude. There's nothing... Like, if you had an endless supply of money and could take all the time off in the world... There's nothing you want done to yourself that you wouldn't just go, hey, I can I just, have the surgery and have it done? I don't think so. Nothing. I, I don't know. Oh, God. I could have a list it's five just, or six deep. It just seems all a bit much, you know? Mm. Anyway, I'm going to stop thinking about that because my legs are hurting now. If I had Tyrese money, I'd have a, a laundry <laughs> list of... Uh, <laughs> Surgery's coming. Sorry, baby mama. I can't. Uh, I can't pay my child support this month because I'm, I'm lengthening my legs. <laughs> There's another video um, that I call earlier in the week, and and I actually lined it up to be on the wheel of segments, but it, the the option for it never came up. But it was um, it was a it was a fight in the middle of uh, an In and Out Burger drive through. And these people are like throwing random liquids on each other. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's got to be concerning because 
if this person's angry at you, they could be throwing urine, bleach, you know, whatever. If you're going to throw liquid on me, I'm probably going to dip out. I'll come back and uh, beat you down. But, <laughs> like, until you run out of that liquid, I'm going to dip. But these people did not. They just sat there and they took it. It's a car full of people, too. Here, watch this real quick. This was uh, fascinating. Now at 11, drama at the drive-thru. Tempers flying right outside and in and out in Santa Clarita. <laughs> Liquids oh, and curse liquor. words thrown. This all happening at the in and out near Magic Mountain this afternoon, close to the 5 freeway. You can see people from two separate cars in the drive-thru line getting out and yelling at each other. At one point, both groups start spraying liquids. One worker seen shaking his head. He's just shaking his head. Uh, can we, do, do we notice that they had to blur out the backside of the one girl? Uh, do we notice she that there are two grown women involved in this? <laughs> this is Soon, others arrive to much. try to break up the fight. And the groups eventually start to walk back to their cars. And just when people thought the fight was over. <laughs> There's no word yet on how that oh argument God. started, but deputies say no arrests were made and no reports were taken because nobody wanted to press charges. Well, somebody probably needs to. Well, I'm just saying. That's, Have you ever uh, acted a fool like that in public for no reason? No. I mean... Not like that. Not like getting, getting angry at somebody and, and throwing things on You've them. Never thrown a drink on anybody before. No, I d honestly, I don't think so. I have. I bet you have. I've done it twice. <laughs> Who was it? What was the reason for it? Okay, so the first story, long story short, somebody spray painted down the side of my car as I was passing by them in traffic. So the interstate, this is in New Mexico, there was an overpass going over like this and I'm in the turn lane to get on the interstate. So as the cars were passing by to turn, they had their arms stuck out and they were just spraying the cars as they went by. I didn't know what they were spraying what on the? my car. I didn't know what they were spraying on my car, but it made me so mad. I was like 24 at the time, maybe 23. Anyway, I pulled up next to their car and I had a full drink in my car and I just threw it in his face and then jumped on the interstate. Nice. That was like my white trash moment. Nice. That's what <laughs> but, Taylor Swift would have done that. Listen, <laughs> it was very stupid of me to do that. But I was so mad. I had a brand new car. Like, my car was literally brand new off the lot. Three months, maybe, I'd had that car. Hmm. And they were spray painting something. I don't know, know what it was. You know, there was... I, I, I didn't do it, but uh, <laughs> back when we were doing the Captain Charisma FM radio mm -hmm. show, online yeah. radio show, uh, this is before... And I think I've talked about it a little bit. just before podcast and anything like that. It was just... We were doing a what was mimicking a, a live radio show in chat rooms. So lots of people come in and listen to it and saw some video as well. We had uh, my buddy Mike Franklin, mm -hmm. who we set up a, I don't know, call it a dare or whatever. We had him dress up in a suit and a tie and take a, um, a dry erase board and a marker and stand on the side of the interstate in Birmingham on the off-ramp, holding a sign saying, homeless, please help, give me money, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And we had him on the phone on this, on this podcast show describing to us what was going on. And there was a lot of honking. There was a lot of, F you, buddy. There was at least one person that threw their drink out of their window as they passed by and hit Aww, him with it. Oh, that's sad. Why would <laughs> yeah. you do that? And, uh, you know, that's kind of, I think that's what we were aiming for. But that's why <laughs> when y'all hear me talk about uh, homeless, homeless Mike, Mike. <laughs> that's homeless Mike. And that's why we gave him that name. Well, it was he was actually homeless at one time. And I think that's where the name came from. And that's probably where the skit came from. Probably. We're like, hey, you're homeless. Let's do a homeless skit. Yeah. Well, mine was pretty stupid, especially uh, since I was in Albuquerque downtown and the show Cops originated in Albuquerque for a reason. Did it? <laughs> yes. Like when I first moved there, um, like two months before we moved out there, episodes of Cops were coming on and they were all Albuquerque. Hmm. And we had already agreed to move out there to work at Intel. And um, 
I was scared to death because I thought, oh my God, this place is so violent. I'm watching this show every night or however often it came on. I was scared to death. So we, I, was pretty, I was pretty stupid. <laughs> There's no telling who was in that car. We were. Do you remember, like, when you? Well, I, what year is this that cops started? So cops started in the nineties. I don't know what year cops started, but we moved out there in 1999. Into yeah, 2000. cops was on before that too, right? So I was. Well, yeah, cops was on before we moved out there because mm. when we moved out there, I literally. The first night I was there, I saw one of the episodes, and I was just hysterical. I was like, "I got to move back to Alabama." <laughs> I was so young; I didn't know. Yeah, well, yeah. If you if you're if there's a TV show that's highlighting the crime in your neighborhood, that that yeah, that does have to be. And I was already scared. I mean, I moved across the country at a very young age. You I just know? think back of the times of like on Saturday night, sitting in the living room with your parents and watching mm-hmm. watching cops on TV. That was always. You know, this is kind of the first reality TV when it comes mm-hmm. down to it, but it was only for yeah. criminals. Well, and they, they did stop it after like eight or ten years um, because it was given Albuquerque such a bad name. Um, but yeah, I was scared to death. Well, it didn't help that my first day in town... Okay, so they have like... And if I've told the story to you guys, I apologize. But my first day in Albuquerque, I decided... We actually lived in Rio Rancho, but I worked in Albuquerque. I decided to go check out my because I transferred with my company where it was going to be so I would know how to get there and everything the next day I drive in and as I'm leaving my employer's parking lot I'm sitting at a light and a SWAT team comes running by with guns get down get down there's helicopters everywhere I'm scared to death already because I've been watching cops oh god I get home I tell my ex-husband I'm like we're moving like this is not happening um, but out there, they use the SWAT team for everything, which you learn that after being there. I mean, that's just something you normally see. Like anytime there's a jumper on the interstate or anything like that, the SWAT team comes. But um, oh, I thought you meant like somebody's battery's dead. And no, like somebody's off. jumping off the interstate. Like that happened all the time. I don't know why. But really? Yes. Well, there's also out there on their interstates, they have, I think it's called an Arroyo. Arroyo. It's like um, concrete riverbed if you will like a uh, half comes... pipe yeah but it's huge and people jump in those for some reason i don't know is but there water in it sometimes mm. not most of the time i mean it's desert out there but um anytime there's uh like flooding or whatever that's where the water goes mm. but we also lived right where the rio grande went through the rio so, grande mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway the swat team they just practiced them all the time they didn't necessarily need them. It was the same situations you'd have here in Birmingham, but they pulled out the SWAT team. It's just job security. It's just practicing, and <laughs> I was scared to death. I mean, mm. I'm telling you. Anyway. And you never went to, to jail? Welcome to Albuquerque. Why would I go to jail? I don't, I don't know. You had SWAT team called on you. I didn't have them called on me. I was sitting at the red light. No, what actually happened is a man murdered his wife, his pregnant wife, in the hotel across the street. Oy from vey. my employer Oy vey. <laughs> on the first day I moved to Albuquerque. Mm. So that's what happened in that situation. Well, I'm glad you came back because if you'd have <laughs> stayed in Albuquerque, I would have never <laughs> met you and we wouldn't be doing this podcast right now. So uh, thank ADD. God Albuquerque scared you to death. That's not why I moved home, but it, it turned out to be a wonderful place. I ended up loving it out there. Yeah. I want to go back. Mm. That sounds like an exciting place. I'll go out there. I'll go visit. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful out there. Not Mm. Albuquerque, but the surrounding areas. The places. Yes. (laughs) Well, uh, I think that's a wrap for another successful week Mm -hmm. of our Over the Line show. Thank you guys for checking it out, as always. Make sure you share the love. Make sure you go to andrewmcclainwho.com and subscribe. So anytime we've got new stuff popping up, we can send it straight to you, and I'm going to send you a bunch of uh, emails and stuff. Anything you get is coming directly from us, which means we've got to go out our, out of our way and write something up so you're mm-hmm. not going to get very much. we got you have all pictures, kinds of stuff. Yeah, pictures from the event, send them to us too so that I can put them on the website. Absolutely. P- any pictures you get of us at events, send them our way. Yeah. Um, we'd love to have those. We're trying to put pictures on the website and mm-hmm. all that jazz, and we're still – feverishly working on the merchandise shop. I get asked about that almost daily. Um, and it, it turned out to be a lot taller task than we anticipated. Mm-hmm. 
but we are waiting our way through it. We're trying to figure it out. And uh, once it gets here, it's just going to be that much yeah, sweeter. Yeah, the designs are made. The printers have been picked out. We're just waiting on business license at this point. So That's it, baby. Yep. Once that's up and going, we are ready to go. Mm -hmm. So um, with that said, we're going to get out of here. Yes. You ready to get out of here? I'm ready for some of that poison ivy cream. Yeah, baby. Poison ivy for the win. We're getting out of here. Until next time. Bye, guys. See you, Coach.